a new zero carbon energy supply in En-ROADS? What if the world invented some new technology that didn't produce any carbon dioxide, say like thorium fission or nuclear fusion? Um, what was it invented, commercialized really fast, spread around the world competing with coal and gas, wind and solar? How much of a contribution might it make to temperature? What would it do? Let's explore this in En-ROADS. All right, the way that this works is that when we click here, we're going to imagine a new zero carbon energy supply arriving three years from now. It arrives, it commercializes over 20 years. Here's what that looks like. This is going to show the uh, arrival in the relative to the marginal cost of electricity production. Here you see in green, wind and solar getting cheaper. Here you see coal, this is dollars per kilowatt hour. You can see it arriving when we imagine new zero carbon energy with the same price as coal and gets cheaper and cheaper through the endogenous economies of scale feedback loop that's covered in a whole nother training. It gets cheaper and cheaper over time and then we'll start competing with gas and coal and wind and solar. When that happens, it grows steadily over time. This rate of growth actually is very fast. So it's a very optimistic scenario for what might happen in the future. If this happens, the, of course, the world doesn't need new zero carbon energy. For the climate, what the world needs is to keep coal and gas in the ground. So coal consumption goes down, gas, natural gas consumption goes down. That helps a good bit. That keeps greenhouse gas emissions out of the atmosphere, but playing it out, it only reduces temperature slightly. This is much more modest than I would have thought when I imagined such an optimistic future for a new zero carbon energy supply. So what is going on? Why is there a relatively modest contribution? Now, mind you, it, there's no silver bullet. So this is just another thing that helps. So why is there such a modest contribution? Well, here are the things that are going on. The first is that uh, the long delays before it actually keeps emissions out of the atmosphere. We see the effect out here in the 2050s when you actually avoid emissions. Why is that? Well, it's because there is that 20 year delay for commercialization. But then what is happening is that you only get new zero carbon energy as you retire away the coal and gas infrastructure that lasts on the order of 30, 35 years. Long-lived infrastructure retires away very slowly. So the new capacity comes in relatively slowly and relatively late. And even in those 20 years, we're building more of that coal and gas capacity. There's a whole other video on this dynamic of capital stock turnover delays and why they have such a big impact on overall temperature. The second reason is that just as we have uh, new technology competing with coal and gas, we also see that we have um, competition with renewables. It is competing with wind and with solar. You're not just taking market share from coal and gas. This new zero carbon technology, which is cheaper than wind and solar, is taking a good bit of the future growth of wind and solar following the blue line, not a black line. There's a whole nother training about this, which we call crowding out and competition between these various sources. The same is true, not just of this, but of uranium based nuclear, where we get a good bit less of that. There's more crowding out. The final factor is that it spreads around the world because it is so cheap. Because it is so cheap, the overall cost of energy globally goes down following the blue line, not the black line. If energy is less expensive, then you have less of an incentive around the world to invest in energy efficiency, less of a reason to conserve energy, and energy demand boosts a little bit 
final energy consumption goes up following the blue line, not a black line. It's following the price demand feedback loop. There's a whole nother training on this feedback loop, which is really important. Put it together with a capital stock turnover delay, with the crowding out of the wind and solar, with this price demand feedback loop, you get a relatively modest cut in overall emissions. And therefore, it only reduces temperature slightly. Now, mind you, there are some other actions that could complement this policy. If there were much more extensive electrification around the world, then there's more that of the energy demand that could be met with this new supply, and you have a much more significant contribution along with more electrification. So summing it up, you can see how it really doesn't do much to keep emissions out of the atmosphere over the next 20 years. However, it could be a significant long-term supply, but you've seen many of the caveats along the way. Other caveats are listed here. If you go under the I button, you can read other equity considerations and potential co-benefits that one could consider. I hope this was helpful. Go get them.